Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. I brought back my introduction to you a long time ago. Hey, what is this, a gag? Oh, it's no gag. I've just been wanting to do that for a long time. <laughs> I guess I had that coming. It's good to see you, Mara. Really? You could have seen plenty of me while I sat around that crummy hotel room for two days. Waiting. While you were out having yourself a good time with all that money. Well, 2,500 bucks of that is mine. Look, honey, I can explain. I don't want any explanations. I just want the money. What about your husband? This has nothing to do with Bruce. I only want the dough that's coming to me. Oh, look, darling, it's a long story. If you'll you only... You conned me for the last time, Neil. Look, baby, I'm working on a deal, a big deal. And if it comes through, we'll be rolling in money. I know what your big deal is. It's George McMahon's daughter. The oil man. It's quite a nice break for you, Neil. And she's pretty, too. And rich. So I want my money. Okay, Mara, just give me a couple of days. No, now. Look, baby, I haven't got it. You know, I've been following your career in the gossip columns. You must have spent quite a good deal on the McMahon girl. That's just the point. I've got a tremendous investment. And if it pays off, If we'll... it pays off, I won't be around. And neither will you. Unless you give me that money tonight. I hope I make myself clear. Tonight. This is called Dreamy. Uh, well, you see, it's uh, for my wife's birthday. What was the name of that perfume again? Uh, something about Paris, I think. Oh, um, you probably mean honeymoon. Yes, that's it. The small or the large size, please? Um, large. Uh, and can it uh, definitely be delivered this afternoon? Yes. Charge or cash, please? It's a charge. Gerald North, 24 St. Anne's Place. Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> Jerry, you promised to be home early tonight, and it's after 7 o'clock. I know. I'm sorry. I had trouble with some contracts. You've been promising to take me to dinner to Piero's for two months. <laughs> Look, I, I just want to shave, and I'll be ready within 10 minutes. I promise. <clears throat> Jerry, a package arrived this afternoon. I didn't know whether or not I should open it. Sure. Go ahead and open it. Jerry, it's beautiful. Good, I'm glad you like it. I I'm going to wear it tonight. Uh, what you've got on now is good enough for me. Oh, silly, this is a must. Ms. North? Yes? I'm from the Lord and Fitch department store. I'm terribly sorry, but there's been a mix-up. A fur coat was delivered this afternoon by mistake. There was a package for this address, but it was missent to a Mrs. Donahue. The store will bring your package by first thing in the morning, but I have to get the coat. The store is awfully upset about the inconvenience, and we... Wait, wait a minute. Uh, Jerry, what did you send me for my birthday? 
Well, the perfume, why? Nothing. It was a mistake. Thank you very much, Mrs. North. Sorry to trouble you. We'll bring your package by first thing in the morning. Good night, ma'am. Who was that, darling? A man from the store. Hmm? What store? Lord and Fitch. Oh, I thought they delivered it earlier. They delivered it wrong. Hmm? Well, they sent a fur coat. Oh, oh, darling, I love the perfume. Honest, I do, and I'm almost out of it. Darling, what are you talking about? The, the mink coat. The, the store sent it, and I thought it was your present to me. But instead, you sent the perfume that Mrs. Donahue got, and so the man came for it just now. Now, Pam, just a minute. Let me get this straight. The department store sent you a mink coat? Mm -hmm. And a man came just now to pick it up again? And he said there'd been a mistake? And how sorry the management was. Oh, Pam, that's, that's one of the oldest confidence rackets in the world. Y you mean it wasn't a mistake? And, and the delivery man was a crook? Yes. But he had such an honest face and he seemed so upset. Oh, not nearly as upset as I am. They forged my name and that, that coat's on your bill. Do you remember what he looked like? Now, wait a minute. Jerry, I'm sorry he got away. Maybe the doorman knows that cab driver. Come on, Pam, we've got to find that coat. Come on, hurry up. It's a good belt. I guess the full price, 1500 I gotta have 2500 15 is tops. Look, it's an $8,000 coat. I'm only asking 2500 15 take it or leave it. I'll take it. Been pretty busy lately, huh? Yeah, I'm working on something big. Something to make this look like chicken feed. And that's why I need the extra grand. Well, if you do something else, you know where you can find me. Closed for the night. Look, we don't want to lie. I'm closed for the night. I know, but did a man come here with a mink coat? The, the fellow had dark hair. He was about my height and about my age. You're not so unusual, mister. Well, I think he is. Oh, Pam, please. Look, we, we traced the cab through the dispatcher. We know the driver brought him here. He was wearing a uniform. The man is a thief. He stole a mink coat that's on my husband's account. I thought he brought it home for my birthday, but... but... Well, come on, there's nothing we can do about it here. I'm starving. If you any idea how much a coat like that costs, how can you eat at a time like this? I'm hungry, and it's my birthday. Oh, darling, that's right, I'm sorry. This is a pretty rotten celebration for you. Come on, we'll get you some dinner, and I can certainly use a drink. <laughs> He shouldn't drink anymore. I suppose it doesn't bother you. Daddy says you theatrical people drink all the time. Of course, he does a lot of drinking himself, but, well, it's different down home. Well, then you can drink as much as you like because you're theatrical people yourself now. I sure wouldn't call what I've done being real theatrical, a few high school plays. Of course, I did do Joan of Arc in a little theater group in Dallas. I suppose that was mostly because Daddy gave him the new switchboard and curtains. Well, he certainly didn't have to. You have real talent, Kathy. You mean that for sure, Mr. Weber? For sure. I've never been so high in my life. Well, darling, you have anything you want. Sky's the limit up to 250. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Max. 
thought you were just teasing or maybe being nice saying you wanted to put me into your show. Oh, no, no, Kathy. I meant it. I know I've got no right at all drinking like this. Uh, you know, Neil, I spoke to Daddy about back in the show. Uh, he was a little suspicious at first, but, oh, not after he met you, but before. You see, Daddy always says oil draws more flies than honey. That's very clever of your father. What's the matter, Neil? You got a toothache? No, no. I, I just remembered a telephone call I have to put in. It's very urgent. Oh, it's about financing? Yes. Yes, I won't be long. Your eyes got a bug out every time you see that guy. You told me you were washed up. I am washed up. But I've got to say to him is strictly business. Wait here. She isn't going to enjoy her dinner. Who isn't? That woman, she's awfully mad about something. Here, dear. Concentrate on your food instead of the gossip. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Does Bruce know you came to see me? Bruce knows that the only thing I want from you is money. And I want it tonight. Or else I'm going to blow up your little deal with the McMahon girl. Oh, look, honey, this isn't just a con deal. It can be legitimate. I can marry the girl. And just because it's legitimate doesn't mean that we can't see each other. Tonight, I saw how limp-eyed she was. I think it's just about time for the jealous girlfriend routine. No, no, we can't do that. It would ruin everything. It's your responsibility, honey, not mine. Just give me a few more days. Tonight. Now, I'll be at your hotel in an hour. Make sure you're there. You've two been here long enough to raise a family. Shut up, Bruce. I told you that this was strictly a business deal. Yeah, it's always been a business deal. Only I get the business. You walked out of me twice to go with him. Now, you... now I'm going to get what's been owed me for a long, long time. And that's the last that either of us will ever see of him. Let's get out of here. Sure enough to want me to be in your play? Sure enough. Why don't we go up to my place and look over a copy of the script? What's wrong? Well, I... All right. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Well, go ahead, quick. Watch where he goes. Hit the change. Let's drink to us, Kathy. No, no, that won't do it at all. It's like blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. You have to do it all at once so you don't get your wish. Like this. There. Is that the way? No. This is the way. So. This is the woman. This is my rival. I won't stand it, Neil. I told you that. Stop being a fool and get out of here. I won't stand it. You can't do this to me. We've never meant anything to each other. I've never given you any reason. Never given me any reason. I love you. Isn't that reason enough? Do you think you can squeeze a woman's heart as though it were a grapefruit? Put that down. I'll kill you. And I'll kill her. Neither of you will live if you do it. She shot herself. She's dead. Oh, don't cry, darling. We can't go to pieces now. 
We're in a nasty spot. This would be awful publicity. It could ruin my entire show. And what's worse, darling, it could ruin your reputation. I don't care about that, Neil. They might even try to say that we killed her. What are we going to do, Neil? There's just one chance. It's not legal, but it certainly can't matter to her now. We've got to get rid of the body. I know some people who do the job, but it would take about, well, $5,000. You see, I've got every cent I have tied up in my production. Oh, I, I have a few assets. I could raise the money naturally in a day or two, but, well, that would be too late. I could get the money from Daddy. I could get it right away. I know he's home. It would have to be in cash. Oh, Daddy always has lots of cash around. Daddy says oil don't do anybody any good in the ground, and. Money don't do anybody any good in the bank. Oh, this is a terrible beginning, Kathy. But I swear I'll make it up to you. Hurry, darling. You sure haven't lost any of your charm. So a dumb dame like that is hardly a fair test. <laughs> You're a cynic, Myra. You can't appreciate the beauty of innocence. <laughs> oh. You probably can't even remember it. And by the way, you almost lost up the whole act when you started on that squeeze a woman's heart like a grapefruit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to laugh right in your face. <laughs> <laughs> How can I answer riddles? Now, we have 400 rooms and 700 tenants. But we know he's here. We followed his cab. He, he's good-looking in a sleazy, mean way. About 5'11", with brown hair. A uh, potted on the right side. Dinner clothes and a white shirt. A and a maroon tie and black shoes. And a white handkerchief in his breast pocket. 9.36. Thank you. to torture him. I'd have done anything for her, but all she ever wanted was him. Even when she was hating him, he was all she ever wanted. Why should he kill her? He's been playing around with Kathy McMahon, her old man owns half of Texas. I suppose he didn't want anyone lousing it up. You didn't kill her. Why did you run? I thought you were the cops. I've still got a couple of forgery wraps around my neck, but no murders. I never killed anybody. Yet. What were you doing here in the first place? I came to kill Weber. She? My wife. Hey, Jerry, she has a gun in her hand. To make it look like suicide. <laughs> All right. Get back now. I thought he was really grief-stricken. I am. Enough to get the guy who did this. Come on, move. Over there. Now. You two will stand there nice and quiet, and nobody will get hurt. But don't try to follow me. I'm going to get Weber. And I'll get anybody else who gets in my way. I'm going to lock you in here. Give me five minutes. And you can start your yell. Just keep out of my way. Jerry, 
I'm going to get Bill Wigan. We must stop that man before he finds that Weber. Wait a minute. He said Weber was going around with Kathy McMahon. Her father just bought the Belden Mansion. We'll start looking there. That was the elevator. We can go now. Come on, let's try the fire escape. Darling, I thought something was wrong. There is. There's a lot wrong. You're not going to get the money from my father or anyone else. I went back, Neil. I went back to get my purse. I heard the two of you discussing the frame up. It's true, Kathy. I don't know how to say this. I've done a lot of things in my life I'm not proud of. Oh, I'm not excusing myself. I'm just trying to say that probably the only honest emotion I've ever felt was for you. And that's why you arranged for that woman to cheat me? Five thousand dollars? I could have had a hundred times that by just marrying you. No, Kathy, this was an old debt, something that had to be paid off. I thought with your help I could change all the rotten things I'd been, the things I'd done. I know it's too late to even hope for another chance, but at least believe that this wasn't a lie. You better enjoy that, Weber. It's the last thing you're ever going to do. Myra always wanted you. Well, she can have you now. I'm going to kill you the same way you killed her. Killed Myra? What are you talking about? But it was a frame-up. She's not really dead. Try and tell her that. I just left your hotel room. I found her body. Look, you must be crazy. What reason would you I have for killed her? I'm going there to see with the two. Oh! Man. What have you done with that mean coat? I guess you're Kathy McMahon. Quite a crowd you got yourself mixed up with. Oh, no, you don't. I've had enough trouble with you tonight. He killed my wife. He was afraid she'd lost of his plan to marry into all that McMahon dough. Well, you're going to have some trouble explaining what you were doing in the apartment with her body. Oh, no, I'm not. Because I can prove where I was up to the minute you found me. And they can tell she was dead a lot longer than that. All right, I'll tell you who killed her. It was Kathy. We'd work a frame up, Myra and me. Kathy came back and heard it. Is that true? I did come back and hear what they were saying, but... All right, it's true. I killed her. But I didn't mean to. We had a fight and there was a struggle and she hit her head on the table. I tell you, it was an accident. She wasn't shot? I'm sorry, Kathy. I really did want to start a new life. I thought you and I could be a swell combination. This is one thing you won't get away with, Weber. All right, keep back, all of you. Keep away from me. Keep away. Funny ending. The gun she used for the frame up. It was loaded with blanks. <laughs> yes, darling. Oh, oh, wait a minute. There's someone at the door. This is Gerald North? Yes. A package for you from Lord and Fitch. Will you sign here, please? Um, what's in it? A mink coat. Jerry, they're trying it again. The mink coat. A man just tried to deliver it. Oh, but damn, I sent that man. Happy birthday, darling. You've earned it. You mean it's mine? Oh, Jerry, I'll put it right on it and come down to your office and you can take me to lunch. Bye. Isn't my husband wonderful? Lady, will you sign this, please? Oh. You have no idea how much trouble we've had with this mink coat. Yeah, lady, but just imagine how much trouble the minks had. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSale. This has been a film presentation.